I just harvested all of my garlic from this bed and now there's nothing growing in it. And while the rest of my garden is growing great and maturing well, it's not time to leave a bed empty. In fact, midsummer is an ideal time to start a whole new series of crops leading into the fall. Join me today as I share with you some ideas of those crops to start in July. There are a number of reasons why you might suddenly have space to start growing in the middle of summer. One is when you harvest something like garlic, and another is when you have a bed like this one, which is filled with my spring plants. Most of them have bolted in the heat of summer, and I'm allowing some like the mustard to go to seed, but the rest are ready to rip out because they're at the end of their life cycle. That's going to clear up space in this bed as well. And believe it or not, a lot of these same plants that I grew in spring are the same ones that I'll start again in summer and grow into the cooler months of fall. And there's a clue about the kind of plants we're talking about. For the most part, the plants that can handle cold temperatures in spring can also handle cold temperatures in fall. You can get lots of recommendations from sources like me, but I also suggest you turn to seed companies to see what they're recommending that you start in summer and then grow into fall. So I got a package from True Leaf Market, and there are seven seed packets in here. This is their premium heirloom varieties for fall planting. So if you're unsure of what to grow, Go to a place like True Leaf Market and get their seed packets for fall planting. And let's see what they say we should be growing. First off, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts is an ideal plant to be starting in midsummer and growing into fall. In fact, if you try to grow Brussels sprouts in spring into summer, you might not have much success. Brussels sprouts likes cool weather. So if it starts germinating during the warmer months, by the time the plants start growing, it's ideal for those Brussels sprouts to develop. Now, it can take a long time. This is a hundred day variety, but particularly if I'm growing in one of my raised beds where I've got a hoop set up, I can grow Brussels sprouts in that bed that used to have garlic. And if it gets too cold, I just cover it with plastic and let it keep growing. So I think this is an ideal choice. Thanks, True Leaf Market. They also have kale. Kale is ideal. I've got kale growing in this bed and I have kale growing in that other bed. As it reaches the heat of summer, it starts to suffer, but it can handle a lot of cold temperatures. This is a 30 to 60 day variety. So. As the days are cooling, I'll be able to harvest kale for many months going into fall. Another great choice from True Leaf Market. Turnips. This is the purple top white globe. This is a 45 to 65 day variety, which is ideal for me. And this raises an important aspect of summer sowing and fall harvesting. You have to understand how long your growing season is. How much more time do you have left? So if I'm starting to sow in mid-July and I can expect my first hard freezes to come in mid-October, then I have August and September and October to be growing these plants. And so a 60, 65 day variety is ideal because I can have them grow in their ideal conditions and then harvest before the hard freezes might kill some of these plants. Here's a purple coneflower. Now they categorize this in their herb list. And while coneflower won't germinate and grow and flower in the first year, it actually takes usually two years to flower. There are many perennial flowers that are ideally sown in late summer or early fall because they need cold stratification. These seeds are, no, are going to need those cold temperatures of winter to germinate in spring. And so while I won't actually be growing any of these plants if I sow them this year, this is an ideal choice for 
a future garden spot. Bull's blood beets, perfect choice. Beets along with turnips, a lot of those root crops to include carrots, are ideally suited for summer sowing and fall harvest. This is a magenta sunset Swiss chard. Chard is always on my list of plants that I start in summer and then grow into the fall as well. And this is a 29 day variety, that's awesome. Chard is one of those things that we typically think we have to grow big because we see the big stocks of chard in the supermarket but you can start harvesting the seeds of chard along with spinach and kale and lettuce as soon as they emerge from the ground. And the last one on this group is spinach, Viroflé spinach. This is a 20, 29 day variety as well. So ideally suited. Not only can I start harvesting this spinach about 30 days after those seedlings start growing, but I can keep harvesting it well into fall, especially with some of that plastic covering. Charred spinach, kale, man, they handle the cold like nothing. So I bet you I'll be harvesting this spinach well into November in my garden. I agree with everything that True Leaf Market sent me in this premium heirloom varieties for fall planting package. And I'll put a link in the description below to True Leaf Market and to some of these seed assortments. Now on the package, it tells me what I should expect frost resistant leafy annuals, cold hardy brassicas, and herbs and vegetables for winter gardens. And when I read the comments on the website, I noted that one of the complaints was that people didn't get what they were expecting. And so anticipate that when you order your seed assortment, you may not get the exact same packages that I just showed you in my assortment. But I think that kind of adds a little excitement, a little variety. That means that next year I can order this same fall garden seasonal seed assortment and expect to get different seeds. So especially if you're new to gardening and if you're willing to gamble a little bit to see what a company that sells seeds is going to suggest for you, this could be an annual event for me, getting this package and then planting out some of the beds as they become bare. I'm quite pleased with the varieties that True Leaf Market sent me in this seed assortment. And also in that package was an 80 page vegetable growing guide. And this covers a whole bunch of plants you might be growing in your garden. Everything from artichoke to watermelon. And these are plants that often we want to grow, but there are little nuances as to when we can get the best success. Well, let's go ahead and start looking through here and get an idea of some of those other plants that we can start in summer and have a harvest before the hard freezes hit. Beans, both bush beans and pole beans. There are many varieties that are less than 50 to 60 days to harvest. And so I can start beans now and have a harvest before I get my first hard freezes in October. You may even have more time than that. Broccoli, that's another great brassica that you could grow. I don't have a lot of success trying to grow broccoli in spring because my summer just comes on too fast and they bolt. But this is an ideal plant to grow into the fall. So I'm gonna start some of my broccoli seeds. I already talked about Brussels sprouts. I'd forgotten that I was going to grow Brussels sprouts. So thanks to True Leaf Market for including that package of seeds because otherwise it wouldn't have happened again this year. Cabbage is always a good choice. Carrots, I mentioned that briefly with the root vegetables. Carrots are ideally suited to grow into fall as is cauliflower. Now it can take a long time for the cauliflower to develop. And so this is one of those that you may need some extra protection over them, but definitely something that you can grow. Cucumbers. We often think of the plants that grow in summer as needing the warm temperatures, but there are many plants that grow so quickly in the summer that they can handle some cool temperatures going into fall. And cucumbers is a perfect example of this with varieties, again, less than 50 to 60 days to harvest. And I regularly do this. I start a whole new crop of cucumbers in mid summer. They'll slow down going into the fall, but I always get another crop. 
Kale, of course, is a good one. Leeks, leeks and onions are difficult for many of us to start from seed in spring. But if we start from seed in summer, we can get that harvest in fall or leave them in the ground over winter, particularly if they're a bulbing onion and you might have them survive the winter and then harvest in spring. Lettuce, of course, mustard is always good. Parsnips, of course, peas. Peas are another wonderful crop that you can start in midsummer and harvest when the days are quite cool. Radishes, of course, winter radish, another good choice. Summer squash falls into the same category as the cucumbers. Many of them grow so quickly that you can get a complete second crop. So that's something that you should think about. So there's a long list of plants for you to consider to grow into fall. And there are some other considerations when it comes to starting the seeds in summer. If you're using containers or like these grow bags to grow some of your plants, that might be an option for a fall garden as well. I'll be harvesting these potatoes relatively soon, which is going to open up these bags. And I should have plenty of time to use the same bag to grow a whole new series of crops. When we start our seeds in spring, generally the air temperatures are cooler and the soil temperatures are cooler. And so the water in the soil evaporates very slowly. So you might be able to get by with one or maybe two waterings per day until the seeds germinate and then begin growing. But in summer, that's accelerated. Because the air temperature is warmer and the soil temperature is warmer, that water is going to evaporate much quicker. So expect that you may need to water your seeds three or four times a day when you start them during the hot months. And consider using something like this shade cloth because that can help cool the soil by shading it and cut down on some of those watering needs because some of these seeds really don't like hot soil temperatures. So you want the soil temperatures to be reduced. Shade cloth and watering can make that happen. Also consider sowing your seeds a little bit deeper. If it's recommended that you sow your seeds a quarter inch deep, well in summer you might be able to go ahead and sow them three eighths or even half an inch deep anticipating that that top bit of soil is going to be drying out relatively quickly. So you want those seeds to stay in a moist environment as much as possible. And sowing them a little bit deeper may be exactly what you need to make that happen. So there's some ideas about sowing the seeds and there's some ideas that we gave you as to what seeds to grow. Don't let your beds be bare going into some of the best growing months of the year. Grow a fall garden with summer sowing. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.